Now coming to the diagnosis of hypothyroidism. In the diagnosis of hypothyroidism, the first and the foremost thing, whenever you suspect hypothyroidism, the most initial and the most sensitive test of hypothyroidism is measuring the TSH level. You check the TSH levels in these patients and the TSH levels are high. It means that the patient is having primary hypothyroidism because there is problem with the thyroid gland and therefore the TSH is increased from the pituitary gland to try to stimulate the thyroid gland to produce the thyroid hormones. So primary hypothyroidism is the most common we will discuss this first and TSH levels will be high. The next thing that you have to do in these patients is to check the levels of free T4. The free T4 levels are checked in these patients. If the free T4 levels are low, it confirms the diagnosis of primary hypothyroidism that the patient is having overt hypothyroidism. The patient is hypothyroid because the TSH is high, the T4 is low. That is a classical hypothyroid patient. Now, what if the free T4 levels are normal? If the free T4 levels are normal, it means that the patient is having subclinical hypothyroidism. What is subclinical hypothyroidism? Subclinical hypothyroidism means that that patient has yet not developed overt hypothyroidism, but the patient is on the way to develop overt hypothyroidism because that increased TSH from the pituitary gland is actually causing the, the thyroid gland to produce normal amount of thyroid hormones because the uh, thyroid gland is not producing the normal amount of thyroid hormones on a normal TSH. So the TSH level have to increase to a higher level by the pituitary gland. There is increased production of the TSH to produce the same amount of thyroid hormones from the thyroid gland it means that, that that thyroid gland is shutting down that thyroid gland is damaged therefore it is needing more stimulation from the pituitary gland more tsh from the pituitary gland to produce that normal amount of thyroid hormones in the body that is subclinical hypothyroidism but for how long would that thyroid gland produce a normal amount due to increased stimulation it would definitely shut down after some time so it would shut down after some time therefore subclinical hypothyroidism eventually converts to overt hypothyroidism in patients in subclinical hypothyroidism what you would see is that there would be increased tsh and that increased tsh would actually result in the production of normal t4 levels what you do in these patients is that you ask ask these patients to come back in one to three months and you repeat the tsh levels you see that whether it was an acute thing and it would resolve all by its own or it's it's developing into a world hypothyroidism and you repeat tsh level one to three months later you the patient comes back after one to three months and you you repeat the tsh level now what if the tsh levels are high if the tsh levels are high you will have to treat these patients because these patients are eventually going to develop overt hypothyroidism because the, it's the pituitary overworking that results in the normal T4. But that uh, thyroid gland would shut down. If the TSH levels are high, if the TSH levels are greater than or equal to 10 milli equivalent per liter, then you have to treat these patients. You have to give levothyroxine to these patients. Or if the TSH level is less than 10 milli international unit per liter with positive thyroid peroxidase antibodies. Thyroid peroxidase antibodies are the antibodies that destroy the thyroid gland. So you have an evidence that there are anti-thyroid peroxidase antibodies that are destroying the thyroid gland that are usually found in Hashimoto thyroiditis. And patient is also having elevated thyroid. It means that that patient will ultimately develop overt hypothyroidism. Cardiac risk factors because that these patients of uh, cardiac risk factors with hypothyroidism have increased chances of atherosclerosis due to hypercholesterolemia in hypothyroidism. So you have to treat these patients planned or current pregnancy because pregnancy increases the demand of thyroid hormones due to the fetus development. Fetus requires more thyroid hormones so the thyroid hormone demand increases in pregnancy. Therefore, you will have to treat these patients with subclinical hypothyroidism because these patients uh, need thyroid hormones and these patients are develop, going to develop overt hypothyroidism after some time. So, whenever you suspect hypothyroidism, you do the TSH level. TSH level is high. It means it is primary hypothyroidism. You measure the free T4 levels. If these are low, this is overt hypothyroidism. If the free T4 levels are normal, this is subclinical hypothyroidism.
Now that was all about primary. Now coming to another case. If you measure the TSH level and the TSH level is low, but the patient is having signs and symptoms of hypothyroidism, and you measure the free T4 levels, and the free T4 levels are also low, it means that there is problem with the pituitary gland. It can be either a secondary hypothyroidism, the problem can be with the pituitary gland, or it can also be a tertiary hypothyroidism, which is a more rarer form of hypothyroidism. It can be tertiary hypothyroidism because the thyroid releasing hormone from the hypothalamus is not being secreted and therefore the TSH levels are low and free T4 levels are also low. You would receive another scenario in your exams, another clinical scenario in your clinical practice as well that the patient was not having any hypothyroidism before, a critically ill patient, a patient having non-thyroidal illness in severe form is admitted with you and you perform the thyroid hormone levels in these patients. In these patients, what you, would, you find is that the TSH levels are normal, the T4 levels are normal, but the T3 levels are low. This is a classical presentation of patient with U thyroid 6 syndrome. What is U thyroid 6 syndrome? Basically, whenever there is a, a non-thyroidal illness or patient is critically ill, the peripheral conversion of T4 to T3 decreases. Therefore, the T3 is low and TSH and T4 are normal because the patient is not having any hypothyroidism. It's just the cytokines during the acute illness, during the critically, critical illness that that patient is having, those cytokines actually stop the peripheral conversion of T4 to T3 and T3 is isolated low. T4 and TSH levels are normal because that patient is not having any hypothyroidism and as soon as this patient recovers from this illness, everything goes back to the normal state. So, the patient is euthyroid but patient is sick and that is called as euthyroid sick syndrome. The, the thyroid function tests are abnormal but the patient is not having any hypothyroidism. In this case, there can be a case in which patient can also have T4 that is also low. If the T4 is low and T3 is also low and TSH is normal in patients with euthyroid 6 syndrome, it indicates poor prognosis. It means that whatever illness that patient is having, maybe sepsis, maybe pneumonia, maybe UTI, that illness is so severe that that patient will have a poor prognosis. So, if T4s are also low, it indicates a poor prognosis in these patients. But these patients, as soon as they recover, from the illness that they are suffering from, they, their thyroid function tests are totally normal. An important point to remember that you would be thinking that I said that the most initial test is the TSH level and then the second test that you do in these patients are the free T4 levels. Why not we do free T3 levels? We do not do free T3 levels. T3 level have no significance in patients with hypothyroidism because free or total T3 are not used for hypothyroidism because in hypothyroidism as the most common type of hypothyroidism is the primary hypothyroidism and in primary hypothyroidism there is increased TSH and that increased TSH would stimulate the conversion of free T4 to T3. So, what you would see is that due to increased TSH in these patients, the T3 level will be normal and free T4 levels will be low because that whatever free T4 is in the body, the high TSH would convert that free T4 to T3. So, the T3 levels would be normal and the, it's the free T4 that will give you an idea that that patient is having hypothyroidism, a high TSH with a low free T4 indicates that that patient is suffering from hypothyroidism. It's just that high TSH that is increasing the conversion of free T4 to free T3. Therefore, free T3 is not used for the diagnosis of hypothyroidism, a very important point. Another important point is that you should avoid routine TSH screening in acutely ill patients because non-thyroid illnesses interfere with serum TSH and results are unreliable. So, in patients just like in euthyroid 6 syndrome, patient is not having any thyroid illness but the results are norm, uh, abnormal just because of the severe illness that patient is having. So, in acutely ill patient, you should avoid checking the TSH levels. In Hashimoto thyroiditis, in all the autoimmune thyroiditis, especially the Hashimoto thyroiditis, you, you must remember anti-thyroid peroxidase antibodies, anti-thyroglobulin antibodies. These antibodies are positive in patients with Hashimoto thyroiditis, especially the thyroid peroxidase antibodies are very 
a specific antibody that destroys the thyroid gland and causes release of the preformed tox uh, preformed um, thyroid hormones in the gland ultimately the patient develops hypothyroidism due to destruction of the thyroid gland TSH receptor antibodies. Now, TSH receptor antibodies in our video on uh, hyperthyroidism, we discussed that patient with TSH receptor antibodies, these, re uh, uh, these antibodies stimulate the thyroid gland and they cause overproduction of the thyroid hormones. But the, in 20% of the patients of hypothyroidism, these ha they have TSH receptor antibodies, but these are actually TSH receptor blocking antibodies. They block the TSH receptor. Therefore, they decrease the thyroid hormone production from the thyroid gland. But the main antibody that you must remember in these patients are the thyroid peroxidase antibodies and thyroglobulin antibodies. CBC shows macrocytic anemia in patient with hypothyroidism. Lipid profile in these patients would show hypercholesterolemia. This is a very important point and is a common tested point in exams that there are increased LDL levels in these patients with hypothyroidism because LDL is taken up by the liver. And in the liver, there is expression of receptors for the LDL and that expression of LDL receptors on the liver occurs due to the thyroid hormones. And whenever there, are th there is thyroid hormone deficiency, the LDL receptors are not expressed on the liver. And this LDL is not taken up by the liver. Therefore, there is increased LDL in the blood. So, there is hypercholesterolemia. There is increased risk of MI. There is increased risk of cardiovascular problems in these patients. Electrolytes would show hyponatremia whenever the patient is having acute hypothyroidism. So, this was all about the clinical presentation and the diagnosis of hypothyroidism. In the next video, we will be discussing how do you treat hypothyroidism in detail. In the next video, we will be talking about how the treatment of subclinical hypothyroidism, the treatment of a patient with overt hypothyroidism, all the surgical methods that you also can use in patients with uh, hypothyroidism. So, for more videos, uh, please click on the subscribe button and make sure to check out my next video on the treatment of hypothyroidism. In summary, how, how do you do the diagnostic workup? What is subclinical hypothyroidism? What is secondary and tertiary hypothyroidism? What is euthyroid 6 syndrome? Why T3 is not used for the diagnosis? The important point that do not check TSH levels if a patient is acutely ill. The other lab findings that you may see in these patients. If you like my video, please click on the subscribe button and check out my other videos on emergency medicine endocrine lectures and make sure to watch my next video on the treatment of hypothyroidism. Have a good day. Thank you.